So first, thank you for coming to this talk. I'm gonna, I'm Natalie, I'm gonna talk about usability principles, but even more than this, talking about how usability uh, is much more than applying a few rules and principles, but really being uh, centered to your users. We'll see how this can be made in a few methods. So a bit of context of why a usability person working on uh, Eclipse uh, applications. Then what is UX and the usability principles I will introduce. So first, a little something about the user experience and usability. Then who is Dave? I will introduce Dave. And then the usability principles in this whole uh, context. And then the details of the usability principles. And then a little summary about how to create a good user experience. And hopefully if you are trying to... Oh, what's going on? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh. Okay. I don't know what happened. I hope it won't happen again. And then hopefully maybe you can make a bit of money with what you're creating. So uh, a little bit of context on Bonita Soft. Uh, it, this is a BPM uh, software that we are creating. Uh, this is uh, open source and it addresses any vertical. So it's a very generic uh, piece of software and I think they're not talking together very well. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So maybe it will have glitches all the place. If anyone has any solution, I'll take it. So uh, what we sell is a, perf uh, a piece of software to automate processes that you connect with your information system and that brings efficiency, security, traceability, and flexibility to the processes. Yep. Uh, what is BPM? Oh, sorry. It's a sorry. business process management. So we offer a way to model and execute the processes in connection with the information systems. So users interact with forms, and then all the rest is orchestrated with the engine. And you model <coughs> your processes in the studio that I will describe that is uh, built on Eclipse. Okay, so we need a good, good user experience for a very generic product, so that's a challenge. Okay, so this is the studio that we have here, and then we have a UI designer about forms, people who were there just before. We are building our forms in a web-based AngularJS and Bootstrap form designer. Then we have form applications that are built so that the user can interact. And then we have also to-do lists to manage in a portal, whether mobile or web. And then what we provide in 7.0 is the uh, the possibility for our users to create living applications, so totally customizable business applications. But let's focus on the studio, which is the applications that we are making. It's built on Eclipse 4.4 for now. Uh, so we call it the BPM Studio. It has a welcome page with very imp uh, in interesting information. We changed the toolbar into a very nice cool bar, and then we have the modeler, and we are creating a bunch of those pop-ups to help the interaction and give guidance. So I felt the need to tell you why I'm here because I don't know Eclipse. Uh, the product started in 2009 and I onboarded in 2013. So everything was made and now we are trying to change or improve things. Um, I have a cognitive psychology background and I've been a consultant before coming to BonitaSoft. So I only know the studio UI, but I don't know Eclipse. So it's quite a bit of a challenge to be here talking to you guys today. <laughs> but the good news is UI, UX methods apply whatever the technology. I as attended yesterday the oomph uh, um, talk, the beginning of it, and these guys are bringing a lot of usability into the, the use and in, into Eclipse, so it applies. So I'll make it. So about users. These people are our Java application developers. They are users, they are R&D, and I don't fit. So users are here, and they are Java application developers. And then you have the R&D people at Bonitasoft, and they are 
Java application developers on Eclipse. So why do they need somebody, since they share the same skills, to tell them how they should talk to each other and design for each other? Well, actually, the R&D people at BonitaSoft, and they are great people, but they are in the BonitaSoft bubble. Okay, so they don't use the software and they create it, so they know everything about it from the bottom to the top. So this is different for the users. They first see it, they don't know what it can bring, they don't know how it works, they just know it built on Eclipse, maybe they know it. So it's a different point of view. This notion of point of view is very important. They don't share the same point of view about the product and they use it in the different context. The R&D is starting to use to implement realistic use cases since this release. So it's very different and we need some usability, some concepts of usability to make them talk to each other, to actually build empathy from the R&D to the users. Okay, back again. Oh. <laughs> it was good for some time. C'est juste une manière de brancher. Ah oh, oui. Merci. OK, what is user experience? So if you have something to retain, I think this will be an important slide for the, this presentation. I try to make it easy to remember. UX is making your users succeed, avoid and recover from error, be efficient, learn and enjoy the ride. So by success, I don't think being uh, making a lot of money thanks to your application. I just mean they are managing to perform their task, what they wanted to do when they first opened Bonita BPM Studio. So it's just the, con the, the opposite of failure, just manage. And then be efficient is just a super bonus. Learn is very important and enjoy is not uh, something that we should not take care of. And the graphical design comes into that, but usability is just something a bit different than um, the graphical design, but we use graphical designers. Okay, so it's usable. UX is about usable. Just, if you can remember that, it's um, something that is easy to make into uh, a very nice uh, user interface then. And the application field is very large. It goes from a scope of a feature to the very details of the UI. We sometimes remember UI as a position or the color of a button, but it's much more than this. We've been told, uh, we've been asked to create a BDM feature, which was a business data model. Okay, is it creation and update? Can we merge? Should we uh, reload them hot while uh, during production time? So the scope is very important and pr um, usability principles won't help on this. So how should we do this? So Dilbert has an answer. User requirements, 400 features, do you realize that no human would be able to use a product with that level of complexity? I haven't counted the features that are in the studio, but there are a lot. So hey, good point, I'd better add easy to use to the list. So <laughs> usability is not a feature, it really comes into the feature while you're thinking of it and while you're developing it. How many of you are dealing with uh, UI user interfaces? that be used by other people than the team that develops it. Okay, so usability is not a feature. <laughs> um, user experience is really about user-centered design. You, get, you need to know your users so that you know what to provide them with. But who or what is a user, really? So for that, I need to explain you a bit of a cognitive psychology background. Actually, creating a user experience is binding the gap between cognitive similarities. A brain is a brain. Some are brighter than others, but they work the same, the same schema, if we compare the uh, brain with a computer. And then you have use cases that are really context-specific, and we have to bind this gap by cognitive similarities. Brain work the same, but in totally different contexts. So for example, in a, a company, uh, the, the company has a goal, right? Then you can break it into sub-goals and an employee at a certain point in time just need to perform a task, a very simple task. Example, a customer support team, the goal of the company is to expand, so the team must please customers. So the sub-goal could be answer tickets relevantly and on time, and there are many other sub-goals. And for an employee at a given time, it's 
pick a ticket from a sorted list. Pick the right one and do whatever you need to do to please the customer so that the company can expand. So our brain, when working in a company, is always this, breaking down goals to settle very small tasks. So to answer this, we have worked with the team, the, cu the customer support team at Bonitasoft, and created a mock-up of this sorted list that has a structure. You see the menu on the top, and then you have a generic action, and then some tabs, and then more actions, but also filtering and tabulation, and then the list of tickets with relevant columns. We didn't build this out of the blue. We really went to interviews and suggestions and iterations with the team. So when the brain of those uh, customer support engineers will see this for the first time, this is what will happen. The human machine interaction. The attentional focus will be brought to certain points. Then the information will be decoded thanks to beliefs that we have from previous usage of other softwares and the memories that we have about that, then we'll make a decision about what to do, and then we'll act, and then we'll get feedback, hopefully, and then with the feedback, we can bring more attentional focus to either um, mend the thing because the task did not perform well, or tackle a new task. And the feedback also changes the beliefs that I have on this system, and maybe on other softwares, and also it brings more memory so that the next time, the decoding, decision-making, and action loop will be much more efficient. So keep this schema in, in mind because we'll reuse this when I'll explain the principles. Okay, so this is what I needed to say about a brain is a brain. It all works the same. But now the situation is very unique because the brain belongs to a user that has a given role in a company at a given time. Plus, <laughs> plus, <laughs> Plus, plus, plus. A unique skill set, a history, a personal life event. Oh no, not gonna work. On my PC, it works like it's displayed. Okay, and we can stop considering the uh, brain as just a computer because we have emotions and much more. So. Somebody in the ergonomics field has summarized this, it's Le Plat and Cuny. They said between the employee and the plant, there are lots of sets of parameters that you have to take into account. And so uh, if you want, well, in the, in the, the employee is having some activity, right, in the context of the plant or the company. And the piece of software is just a little bit here what we call the materials, right? And then doing this activity that has impact on its health, security, skills and satisfaction, but also on the production quality or robustness and much more impacts in the company, right? So for example, the mental state of the employee can really have impacts on the quality of the production, whether it's good or bad. And a piece of software has also impacts on the activity, the quality of what's produced, but also maybe the skills. If the, the, um, the software is good and offers a good user experience, maybe you will bring new skills to this employee and it's very good. And there is also a reverse loop. Uh, for example, uh, if the software is not that great, then the quality is not that great and then maybe you will change the software. You will take another one or maybe another employee because the production is not very good. So the, the context of using, uh, of interacting with the machine is very, very complex. But we need to solve the equation. We have a common brain in a very different context, so what should we do to make it work for our users? So here comes Dave. Who's Dave? Dave is a persona. So we work with persona. We are trying to build those kind of artifacts that we use and we refer as the, the person we are developing for. So here's our Java application developer. So how do we develop persona? We define a scope. In all this context, we want to know the responsibility of our users in the project, the BPM project. We want to know their goals, their technical skills and environment, what they share, the habits of how they use software, in what context, uh, what they like and don't like about running their projects, and their geography. This is what we chose. Now that we have this scope, 
we run surveys, observations, on-site observation, or we have people come and use the software to let us know about uh, how, what they think about it. And we use marketing because they have good listeners to what our users may be or are. So it's a tentative. We're trying to get into their bubbles now, okay? We are getting into the Acme bubble of our users and trying to get more information. So now that we have it, we can learn also by talking to them about their specific use cases. Now, we are thinking that our users on the studio, they don't know AngularJS. But maybe in a few years they will, so we can provide much more tools using AngularJS. Now our UI designer, as I was saying in the beginning, uses AngularJS, but we know that Dave needs a lot of explanation to make it work in AngularJS. Maybe in a few years we won't need to explain anything, because we will assume that Dave knows AngularJS technology. And now, so the set of persona that we are working with is Sam, our system admin, Fred, these guys know AngularJS. <laughs> this is our front-end developer, and he talks a lot with Dave, of course. Then we have Anna, our business analyst, and we have Andy. So the goal is to make Andy happy, okay? So Andy is the end user of the people who are developing BPM applications, so we don't deal with Andy so much at BonitaSoft, but much more with uh, Dave, our hero. This is our hero. So now you have uh, Dave's uh, card. We have it a different way uh, in BonitaSoft. It's a four-page PowerPoint with what he uses in the software um, and how the sales can also contact this person. What are the things we can tell Dave so that he pay attention to BonitaSoft. But here for the scope that we have chosen and I showed you, this is what it is. So now we know Dave. So now just develop for Dave uh, as a user-centered company. So there is one way of developing. You know what you're doing, and then you wait for Dave to come to you and learn and use it. Okay, this is techno-centered design. And Dave is not very happy, and he suffers. So we want user-centered design. We want to go to Dave, learn who he is, and develop for him, and hopefully we'll make him happy. So we want to create empathy for the users, and this means enforcing a process. So whether for a new feature or for improvement on, of an existing feature, for the design and implementation phase, we bring knowledge of the persona, and also the usability principles I will introduce also come into the place for this knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then, at each phase of the development and implementation, you also need to check. This is pretty easy. You have a panel and you check your design, as the mock-up has showed you, and then your implementation you check. Then when you deliver, you also run usability testing with the users to let you know if it was finally okay in their environment. Because maybe as a mock-up it's easy, and then when it's the real thing, it's different. <coughs> And then to close the loop, you argue, you lobby, you train, you talk a lot with the R&D. And I'm not so much as a karate uh, warrior, actually. I'm more into yoga. So it's, it's perfect. I mean, working with the R&D at Bonita Soft is just perfect. I love it. <laughs> so now the details. <coughs> so it's the brain stuff, the human-machine interaction. But we know Dave, so we're going to work for him. So for attentional focus, how to capture and guide this intentional focus. You need to organize the content, you, get, you need to give it a hierarchy. <laughs> and, okay, I'll speed up. So for the uh, studio that we have, the menu is a regular menu. The tree that we have here uh, recaps a lot about what the design that you've made in your process. It gives a structure. It's very important to find out where is this data I'm using. And um, we have a BDM manager. So this is part of the cool um, UX user interfaces that we have created for this business data model. We've created a master detail panel. So just with little things here, you create a business object and then when you click one, you, give, you have all the uh, details for this one. So it's pretty basic as a concept, master details, but we've made it into this uh, pop-up and users actually really like it. Now, we have uh, still a 
bit of a problem with our top menu. It's not very legible, but you have development, server, organization. Actually, once we know Dave, he's, he's doing BPM, and BPM is about people, user interfaces like forms, processes, and data. And we don't have a menu called data, and we don't have a menu called UI. So pieces, some pieces are missing. So this is a mock-up, but maybe on the welcome page, instead of having the design of the process and then some resources to get to know more about how it works, we could add data model, organization, and development for other resources. Just so we make all these pieces fit together and more obvious to Dave that, hey, this is BPM, so you have the process, you have the data, and you have the people. And we keep the UIs uh, in our AngularJS UI developer for now. UI designer. Okay, for attentional focus, so how to draw the attention, you have to make a structure. Then you need to decode this information. So you, you need to bring meaning, build meaning for the user, for Dave. So you should name the models that you use. Maybe we have an MVC model, maybe we are working on another paradigm. You should just say it because it calls lots of beliefs of the people who know, for example, an MVC model or a BPM or whatever. So name it, it's okay. You need to describe a, a lead through a basic workflow. So tutorials are great. Uh, explain useful tips and tricks and warn against pitfall, it's okay. Um, developers talk to developers, maybe the, um, what we have created is not perfect and it's okay. So we should better say what's not been done or what are the use cases that are not covered because then we will have gratitude instead of anger. So it's okay, you can warn <laughs> and you can open to more information and resources. So we use contextual help. This is the properties window um, that when you select something on the, de uh, the designer, we've created a well of information. That's a lot to read and maybe some users won't read it, but it's our responsibility at least to detail what a contract is. We have chosen to um, um, separate the process and the UI now. So we have a contract in between a task and the form that can talk to the task. It's new, it's in seven, it was not in 6.3, 6.7, 6.5, it's new. So we need to talk about it and maybe the user will want, uh, won't read it at first, but then not managing to use the contract, maybe we'll come back and remember there was something that was telling, that was explaining the contract. And of, uh, also, you can close it. If you click on this question mark, it's closed and it will remember you don't want to see it again. So it's okay, it's for the learning curve. Um, on the welcome page, you have also a, a load of links. You have videos for tutorials, you have links to documentation, uh, we also have examples of processes that you could like, that you would like to customize and use as is. So we provide a lot. Uh, and we use the little eyes. These are good stuff. <laughs> the little eyes, for example, the description is something that usually in the, the studio is not used. I mean, you don't need to use it, but for the contract, it will be used in the automated generated form. This will be user hints to describe any field on your form. So we, tr we, th we thought it was pretty interesting to describe it a bit more. So we made great use of these eyes. They are very small, but they bring a lot of information. Okay, we still have small problems in the guidance of our pop-ups and we have something maybe I will try and show you with the video if this works. So. <laughs> Uh, there's something about our pop-ups I will show you. Again, it's, it's okay to talk about what we are not doing perfectly. That still needs to be improved. Okay. So yeah, look at the guidance on the top of our pop-ups. You're creating a new variable, okay. Then you add a new variable to step one, okay. And then you add a new variable. So okay, I think every, <laughs> everyone knows you are creating a new variable. But you, we could use this as a sentence to say more about what to do, what is mandatory, what is not, maybe give a little explanation of what this list of options is, because it's not very obvious now. So yeah, there is space, so use it. Uh, then we had something about the video. I'm trying to switch just how to provide uh, help on something. 
So we are in the middle of a usability testing session. It's remote, it's on GoToMeeting, and it's recorded. And a guy says, you know, about the Angular GI stuff, we don't uh, have enough guidance about the templating and the syntax. And by the way, it's the same with our MV MVEL scripting. Uh, I don't know about MVEL, I know about Groovy, so you don't say anything about MVEL. And I'm telling him, actually, yes, we do. We are actually saying something about MVEL, at least we tried. So I'm trying to explain to this guy where it was. So I'm, I make him click. Yeah, you have this question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you really need to <laughs> be able to find that one. So we put a lot of energy into giving this. I, I, I said to the R&D, we need something to get on MVL. It's a new language we're introducing. We need the question mark and then launch to something to fast learn about this. So we put a question mark, but it, it's, it actually appears at the bottom left of the, um, the pop-up because we couldn't find technically on Eclipse a way to make it more visible. So I can take any suggestion. And then this guy complains, this guy complains that we actually don't speak about MVL and we don't help. And then when I tell him, yes, we do, it was a thriller. I don't know if you, you heard <laughs> this <laughs> laugh at the end. It was just like Michael Jackson thriller. <laughs> just, you know, it, it's, it's okay to give uh, help, but if you don't make it visible, then it's a, a waste of energy. Okay, coming back to the presentation now. All right. So now, yeah, decision making is the right choice. And, and again, for these question marks, it's Eclipse, so we, we think that everyone using Eclipse will know that a question mark brings more information. But again, it didn't work. So Dave knows Eclipse, but not the way we are dealing with Eclipse, maybe. So is the right choice. We need, for, to make a choice, we don't need to uh, call on a lot of memory resources. We have something in usability that says recognition rather than recall. Make a list, I will find my option. If you ask me to enter the right value out of the blue, I may not remember, so I'll go back somewhere else to find the right information to input it. So lists are great. Offer the right options, of course, and clarify the labels for the choices. So we have an expression editor. When you want to enter something, you can pick the type. Uh, when you select script, Groovy scripts, you have a whole list of the categories and within which you can find lots of functions. Um, and then you can also call on the variables that you have defined to use in your script. So you click and then you have variables and now they are categorized so you can really find what you need uh, pretty easily. Use drop down and also something that we still have here as a problem in the uh, expression editor is that we give a lot of information, very useful here, but the, the location and the place we have to describe it is still very small. So we've put, again, I think they have put a lot of energy, but it's not used. When you see people using it, they are searching for, uh, for functions, but they don't see it. So we need to find a way to uh, make a better use of all of this great guidance that these guys have provided. And then I have something about the checkbox versus radio buttons. When you create a variable, you have something that is a check that it says is multiple. That's an option. You can choose it's multiple or not. But then we found that some users, they don't understand what it means. I have an option of making it multiple, but multiple of what? So we just replace that by single or multiple as a choice. And then we make this part of the nature of the variable, not just an option that you can choose or not. So by just switching the uh, widget that we are using, people understand more. And also we've added this just in case it's not efficient, it's not sufficient. Okay, so now my decision is made, I need action. So what do I need to make the right action? Well, see the controls, you see this question mark? I'm looking for information about MVEL, but I don't find the button because it was not obviously located. So make the control location, okay, the size, the colors, and there's something called the fits low. Fits just said something very, maybe basic, that if the button is visible and big, and if it's close to the position of your mouse, you will have 
better chances to click, to click fast and to click accurately. And if you put a button on the top right hand corner of your screen and it's small and maybe you have the delete button just next to this one, you, you can make errors and not see the button, etc. Et so that's the fit store. It's very easy and it's something big in usability. Oh no, it makes sounds. And it's back. <laughs> Okay, so in our list of options, I have a few things to tell you. When you create variables, there you have the list of options and you don't quite know what this could mean as a data type. Uh, actually, it's a kind of an enumeration. But we've called list of options because we thought about Anna, our business analyst, that maybe she didn't know about enumeration. Okay, so you need to know what this list of options is and we don't have eyes. We, we, we don't explain this. And when you click on this, you have a set of buttons on the right of the table and some people don't manage to clearly see whether this works for this table or for that table because this set of button is disabled. So maybe we, if I say add, I'm expecting something here, but no, it's actually to add something here. <laughs> so position of buttons can really help you save a few seconds. And then when you have defined your list of CDs, for example, then to use it in a form, um, Usually you use this pencil to open the um, expression editor that we've seen earlier on, but for using the list of options, it's actually this one you need to use. It's a data type, but it's different, so we've <coughs> provided you with a new button. Only in this case you can use list of options, and it's never seen. So actually we have bugs about list of options. They work, but just the way we offer you the controls doesn't make it work for the, the people. And I think that would work for Dave, but for any other one. This is a very basic usability principle to respect location of buttons. And maybe now we are thinking of uh, getting the list of options into the editor expression, the expression editor, sorry. More on action, give the power to the user. Provide him flexibility and variability. Sometimes I want to work this way, sometimes another way. Maybe I want the welcome page to often display when I open Bonita, Soft, Bonita BPM Studio, and maybe I want to get back to my previous project. So offer me a pop-up, let me, let me choose. Uh, it depends on the time of the project. Am I developing or testing or are we in production? So maybe I need different things. And the expertise, I'm a newbie, let me know a lot of things, explain to me. Or I'm an expert, so I want to go fast. And no kidnapping, I'll come back to that later. So we have preferences, Eclipse has preferences. We have twisted it so that it a little it's a little more graphical. We use environments for um, development and, um, and uh, production lifecycle phases. We have a contextual palette that I'll show you here. When you select an item here, we offer a whole bunch of shortcuts for you to go on um, faster to, uh, to define your process. And whenever you need to pick a variable, we also offer a list of options to create variables so that you don't have to go back to the, position, to the location where you create variables, you can add them on the fly. So it takes some energy, but it's a good return on investment. Um, more now on the, diff on, on the kidnapping. Actually, we don't offer cancel or sometimes we offer cancel and it's not usable. Like I'm running my process, I want to see it live. I have a cancel button, but it's disabled. <laughs> and running, maybe there are problems and it can take minutes and I'm not able to cancel it. So I need to close Bonita BPM Studio to make it work. So we are working on this to provide the, the cancel feature. And it's a lot of work, <laughs> technically, not just on the usability side. It's easy for the usability person, to, hey, make it, make it enable, <laughs> but then it takes a lot of work to make it work. And as I said, the welcome page is forced and maybe it would be a nice option to ask whether I want it or not from the beginning. Okay, guide on what needs to be input, the format of the input you're expecting. So no need for a lot of demonstration. You all know about tooltips, placeholders and hints to say the date should be this format or the email should contain an error base and uh, a dot. Now the feedback thing that reinforces beliefs and memories. Whether there is success or error, you need to tell the user, even for success. You've deleted successfully two users. Okay, I know they are not 
any longer in the database. It's, it's good to know everything went fine. And also sometimes it takes time, it takes time, so you also need to tell the user. So system status must be visible, give feedback, waiting time management, error management, all of this. We have um, now implemented more progress bars with buttons that you can skip. <laughs> and we give a status about what went wrong and what went right. And we also ask questions when deletion is about to happen and some bad things may, uh, may be impacted. <coughs> and also to avoid errors, we provide default names. Wherever you create something, so it has to have a, s a stable status of the system, we provide default names. And we still have some random progress bars that you have green something that goes in here 15 times and you don't know what's going on. So we still have it and we're working on that. Uh, we, we sometimes cannot make live validations in our um, uh, designer because it impacts a whole lot of things. And the last thing I don't remember. Oh. Okay, is we have a few layout issues in uh, some of our pop-ups in the wording and all sorts of things. Okay, this is the default names. We still, so you create a new input for your contract. You have a default name, that's okay. You don't need to input anything. But if you still make a mistake and you erase it, then we tell you about that. Okay, you need a name for your contract input. Before, you needed to go to the whole validation status to see it. Now it's in the properties view. So again, this is a suggestion from the R&D. They are getting more and more sensitive to uh, usability and getting uh, a sense to the user and the way it works. So we are making progress. It's very good. Then the, this is about efficiency. You know, when you've run the loop many times, then the decoding and the decision making is faster. So you need to use standards and consistency. So Eclipse is good for consistency. Okay, you have built in uh, lots of uh, pop-ups and such and, and labels for buttons and everything. And we use similar UIs for similar uses. You create a new parameter, you create a new variable, you create a new document. It all works the same with the same pop-ups, the same flow. Um, we use the control space, the, which is an Eclipse shortcut, to have um, um, auto uh, suggestions here, but we don't say it and I was watching people using the software. This guy is writing an email message from an email connector after an action is a success to notify a user that the thing went well. And he complained, I want to see my variables. So I suggested you should use control space because it's based on Eclipse. Ah, okay, it's based on Eclipse, but I, th I thought I was in Bonita. So even though this guy uh, ranked him, I mean, he rated him four out of five on his Eclipse knowledge, Control space did not come into his mind because he's in Bonita soft. He's in Bonita BPM. So you should never be too um, sure that Eclipse really uh, is uh, obvious on these guys because there is, a, uh, there is a skin that we provide when, when creating a, an application based on Eclipse. So people lose their, I mean, their, the belief that they have on Eclipse will not always work on your application. And also labels. We have connector implementation here. We are building a new implementation of the connector. We have the wizard, and the wizard always finish with finish. But what it brings you to is the window, the editor, when you can code the implementation of your connector. So actually, you're beginning. You're not finishing. <laughs> so um, uh, use, uh, consistency is good, but you also need a little bit of customization sometimes. Okay, so this, is, this will be in the PowerPoint, it's just a reminder. And also these are the sources of all these usability principles. Uh, just to notice, it's an ISO norm, usability of uh, software. Reminder, how to create a good user experience, make your users succeed, avoid and recover from error, be efficient, learn and enjoy the ride, so it means really going to the user-centered design mode of developing. Meet your users, it's not difficult. There are plenty of users um, that are willing to help. 
create your persona, build empathy, then design for the persona, apply those easy principles, and again, check on the field. Maybe it was right on the mock-up, but not when it's the finished thing. So this is not toward you. <laughs> this is what the, the, the user just want to do. They just want to do the job, reach the goal of the company by small tasks and sub goals and reach the goal. So just allow them to do that. Thank you.